God bless you. God bless church family here in attendance, everyone attending online. My name is Brother Eli, and I get the honor and privilege of taking up this morning's tithes and offerings. Um, today I want to talk about uh, Jesus in the book of Matthew and the importance of giving with generosity. You know, we when we tithe for Christ, um, we're not throwing money away. We're not just giving money to something. We are taking what we have and we're saying, God, we trust you with this and we're giving it to you so your kingdom can grow here on earth, so people can be helped, lives can be touched for your glory. You have already given us so much by blessing us with eternal life. This monetary stuff, we give to help others as well. And so the verse I would like to share is in Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse 15. This is where Jesus is about to feed the 5,000. Now, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus and the disciples had been healing people all day. It was nighttime. The disciples, in their limited mind, said, We have nothing to give. And to which Jesus replies, But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And when you continue to read that, Jesus blesses the bread and the fish, and he's able to feed 5,000 men, not including their families and their wives, and there was some left over. You see, it doesn't matter what we limit ourselves or what we think we have to give. If we're giving it for God, if we're trusting God to give it, it's going to be enough. When we have something and we bless it in the Lord, because what Jesus did, he blessed the fish and the, and the bread and was able to feed 5,000. When we take what we have and we give it and we bless it, Jesus will make it and use it for his glory. And I encourage everyone that calls this place home and everyone who, who has that giving heart that they also have generosity with it. God blesses us with discernment, and there's some things that we, we need to take care of first, of course. But if we have something to give to a brother and sister in need, if we have something to give to the church to ensure that we have a place to come and worship and do this, then yes, let God work through your heart. Let God work through our heart so we're not holding it and being reluctant, but being generous in what we have. Because God will see us through any storm in any situation. God will see us. And he's sometimes, for some of us, he's brought us out of the depths and brought us here now, blessing us with things that are only of him and are only good. And he calls us to do the same for others in need. So this morning, I pray that not only do we have an open heart when we give, but we give generously because it's a celebration. We rejoice in giving. We rejoice in helping. We rejoice in seeing kingdom business being done and seeing the church grow and move here in Adelanto to see God's work and his word move here on earth. Our end game is eternal life, which we've been promised. We still have the opportunity to help that grow here today. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we lift up the tithes and offerings to you this morning. God, we thank you for your goodness and your sovereignty, and we pray that you have a hand over these tithes, that we give to you generously, and that you take that and you use it for your glory, God. And we give humbly to you because you gave to us first. We love you, we thank you, and in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give him some praise, church. If you would like to give online, we have an online account, Tithely and Zell. We also have Brother Jose here in person who can come by and hand you an envelope. Amen. And at this time, I would like to introduce my friend, our dear pastor, Pastor Jaime Gonzalez, to come share the word of Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's get some praise. Welcome once again. God bless you all. Those of you who are joining online, God bless you. Um, it is a privilege, an honor and a privilege to be able to bring the word of God to Wherever you're listening at your home, um, it is a privilege. We do not take that lightly. So thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Today we're gonna we're gonna minister on um, walking in wisdom. The Bible calls it walking circumspectly in um, Ephesians five fifteen. You know. It, throughout my lifetime, I've I've um, met many many folks. Um, just in conversation, you know, hey, I, I've known the Lord for I'm gonna say 40 years. Yeah, I've known the Lord for 40 years, and um, 
having the conversation and they're doing things as we're talking that is not evidence of knowing the Lord for 30 years or, or maybe knowing of him, but maybe not walking with him, maybe not walking circumspectly. Sometimes I've, I've even spoke with folks at times and um, I've said, but does the Lord know you? But does the Lord know you? Yeah, you've known the Lord for 30 years, but you're still chucking and jiving with your life. Does he know you? Does he know your name? Is your name written in the book of life? And I know maybe sometimes you did. Man, I didn't come here to hear that in church. But it's the word of God. Amen. And we are responsible for sharing the word of God with you. Amen. I've been walking with the Lord for 30 years, but are, is he walking with you? Are you walking in his steps, in his righteousness? Are you walking circumspectly? So these are quest, real questions that you and I, we need to ask ourselves. Amen? Because I know, I know, I don't know about you, and it's not in my notes, but I know there is a line in the Bible where, where somebody's thinking that everything's going to be all good, and, and the Lord says to him, depart from me, I never knew you. Come on. So if you've known the Lord for many years, please take some time today to ensure that he knows you also. Amen? Lord God, we thank you this morning for your grace, for your mercy, Lord God, for your word, Lord God. We pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will be poured out upon us, on your sons and on your daughters this morning, Lord God. We believe that the word of God does not go void. So we pray that your word will bring fruit this morning, much fruit and lasting fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. And we all said... Amen. Come on, give him some praise. I didn't mean to start with that one-two combo, but the Lord just led me into that. Um, our scripture for today is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, 15 and 16. Amen. Walking in wisdom. Walking circumspectly. See then, verse 15 says, see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise it's only two either you're a fool or you're wise that's another I, I, I didn't even mean to come out this way but the, we need to let the word of God come forth either you're foolish or, or you have wisdom it's that simple verse 16 says redeeming the time because the days are evil if you don't think the days are evil just look around if you don't think the days are evil, just uh, catch a, a news um, segment. If you don't think the days are evil, go on your social media and see how uh, uh, the world is trying to twist up so many, many things. We're not even going to list them. Amen. You and I, the Bible says that we should see to it then that we walk circumspectly, that we walk in wisdom, that we walk diligently, that we walk accurately walk accurately i have a lot of room to show you how i used to walk like that what, what are you doing is your leg going out what are you doing you know what i mean walk accurately with purpose with precision amen i don't have to zigzag like i used to to get to over there where brother carlos is at i thought i had to do a bunch of a bunch of doing this so i could do this Get where you need to go. Walk circumspectly with the Lord and go where he is calling you and I to go. We don't need to be zigzagging. Amen? One of my favorite authors says, um, John Maxwell says, if you don't know where you're going, friends, you will never get there. Let me, let me say that again because, because it sounds so silly, right? It, it, to just when the first time you say it, some of you are going to be like, duh. Okay, well, let me say it again. If you do not know where you're going, you will never get there. In life, in your marriage, in your relationships, in a career, if you don't have it set on where you are going, very likely you're never going to get there. Because you're going to be zigging and zagging in every other direction. Amen? James chapter 4, verse 7 through 8 says this. Therefore, 
Submit to God. If we're going to walk circumspectly, if we're going to walk in wisdom in Christ, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Wow. So if you know this, if you hear this word, then you can't say, well, the devil made me do it. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. He will run. He will run from you. He will stay away from you. Amen? Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Then he goes even further. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Like I shared earlier. Yeah, I've been walking with the Lord for 40 years. <coughs> Have you now? Have you now? Double-minded. Amen? You know, I'm not here to throw stones at, at your sin. We all fall short. I'm going to say we all fall short. The, the Bible really emphasizes there is none that is perfect. And then he says not one. Amen? But if we walk circumspectly, if we walk in wisdom, and we say we are walking with the Lord, we want to walk with the Lord, there are certain things that we have to put down, friends. Does that make sense? There are certain things that we know that we should put off. Amen? The Bible says it. James 4, 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Did you know that? If God has shown you something to do for the Lord, for his kingdom, and, and you know his word, and you know him, and you are walking with him. And if he shows you to do this, and you do not do it, that is sin to you, friends. That is sin to you. See, that might not be sin to so-and-so over here, Joe Schmo, who does not know the word yet, who is not walking with the Lord yet, has not invited him into his heart at the moment. To him, it's not going to be sin to come here and serve in the church. He, he has other sin that he needs to deal with. But when it comes to the Lord, the Lord removes all these things. But you and I, we've dealt with some stuff. And God has shown us to do certain things, to walk circumspectly, to walk in wisdom. And you and I do not do it. To you and I, it is sin. And I'm talking to the core group today. Because you know this, man. <laughs> I had to throw that one in. You know this, man. But to others that don't, then we need to teach them. How? By walking circumspectly. By walking circumspectly. See, if I get this young man under my wing and start to teach him of the ways of the Lord and I'm walking like this, take my son-in-law, Brother Ernest. If I'm walking like this and, and he is to follow me as I follow Christ, they're very likely he's probably going to do this too. Kind of go to the left or to the right. It's up to you and I to walk circumspectly because we have others following in our paths. Children, grandchildren, people at work. They're looking unto you. And if what you're showing them says, well, yeah, I'm a Christian and I'm just going to go like this because brother and so-and-so showed me how to do it so swell. Oh my gosh. God forbid. It's better just to not walk with the Lord. I know the Bible says something about being lukewarm. He prefers that we're either hot or cold, but not lukewarm. Amen? All right. None of that's in my notes, y'all. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 10. Walking circumspectly. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord Fully pleasing 
him. Fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, for you who hear, hear and know and do not do, that is sin to you, to you and I. But he's shown us the way and God is interceding in our behalf that we would all in wisdom and in spiritual understanding that we will walk worthy of the Lord. Think about it. Think of what the Lord has done for your life. Think of what He's done in your life. Is, should you and I not walk worthy of that? If nothing, if you can think of nothing, go to the cross. And remember that God sent His only Son to be crucified on this cross for you, just in case you can't think of anything that he's done for you lately. Come on. Amen? Come on now. Walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. I want you to know there's so many things coming at you and I that want us to, to invest our time, our talents, our treasures into things that are pleasing to us, or pleasing to those who are trying to deceive or pull us away. But the Bible says that we should walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him. That's where it needs to start. I used to say this all the time. If I can live my life for the Lord to the best of my ability, live a life that is fully pleasing to Him, that the people that love me sincerely will be pleased with me. Amen? So if you're living a life pleasing to the Lord and, and it's getting somebody all bent out of shape, they you have to evaluate that relationship. Are they really for you? Come on. Because sometimes they're just for themselves and they want something from you. Nobody that loves you is going to want to take away from your relationship. with. That's just fact. Being fruitful in every good work. See, we don't know the fruit. We, don't, we won't know the fruit now. Sometimes it, it'll be immediate. Yeah, we'll get to see. But sometimes it's going to be years past. Sometimes the fruit of your labor and mine, we, it won't, it won't come, and come out into fruition until we're gone home with the Lord. But it did change the fact that you lived a life pleasing unto Him. If we do our part. We let God decide uh, about the fruit and when it's going to um, ripen and when it's going to multiply. Amen? Fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Friends, from day one, when we first, my wife and I first came out um, to plant the church here in Atlanta, I wish I had some pictures. Um, I have to look into that. There, we had some pictures of, um, you know, my kids were young and um, they were kind of funny looking sometimes with the haircuts. I don't know who, I don't know who was cutting their hair, but you know, they'll be on, on the instruments, or you see them with the broom, or 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 just certain things that we're doing in ministry when it when you are called when it's just you and your crew, right? But we did that. First and foremost, I told my church, our church, you guys now, you have to read your word. You have to read your word. And I told them, you are going to get tired of me saying this to you, but I need to be obedient. You must read the word. It says here, you, we must increase in the knowledge of God. How are we going to do that? We must get into the word. We must read the word. We must hear the word. We must see the word in action. We must be the word in action. That's how we're going to increase in the knowledge of God. Amen? There's no other way, friends. I know some of you, you might, you might want to take a, a, a pill to give you the knowledge of God, or maybe a mixture, a super mix to like Popeye's spinach, and then you get strong in the word of God. It doesn't work that way. You must take time and get into the word and get to know God on an intimate level. That's how you will increase in knowledge and wisdom of Him. That's how you will bear fruit.
for his glory. And that's how you and I will walk in wisdom of the Lord. Simple, but it's not very popular anymore. Think about it. It's not very popular anymore. I always look for my phone to make an example. These things are great. These things are really great. I got a picture to my girls here. And you can even get the word here. It's great. But you can also be super distracted and pulled away from everything that comes into that. Use wisdom. Use wisdom. If you can't handle it, get you a real Bible. Get you a real physical Bible. If you can't handle all the ding and uh, all these little notification sounds, uh, when you try to get into the Word of God, you know, lock this thing up and get into the Word and then grab it back. I already know what y'all are thinking. I'm going to go ahead and say it because my wife used to do that. But yeah, I reach out to so many people. Yeah, you do. But you know, she had one of these. And she had it written up. She had sticky tabs. She had all that stuff because um, she used this as a tool to, to reach out. <laughs> See, she didn't fool herself. She knew once she got on that to the Bible, the first notification Notification came in, oh, let me see what so-and-so is posting. But it's using wisdom. This is not the devil. This is not the devil. Use it as a tool. We're so blessed that we get to, uh, God gives, puts somebody on our heart. Um, those folks that don't answer their phone, right? You get to text them and you know the word of God went to them. It's up to them if they open it up or not, but you were obedient. So it's a tool. It's a great tool. But well, look, don't let that tool um, be used as a, as a vessel to kind of distract you from getting into his word and knowing his word and getting intimate with the Lord. Amen? I, I have one of these. I use this for the word. And um, I'm not real big on the status. What are they now? Status? or What do they call it? Social media, man, I'm not real big on checking your status to see what you're doing. I, I, I'm not real big on that. So, um, But if I was, there was a time where I was really big on the, um, sports um, announcements, who was going to get signed, and, and I was real big on that, and, and I had to put it down. I had to delete those apps because it, it was taken away from me spending time in the Word of God. So I just got rid of them, and, and I'm still alive. I'm still alive, guys. And if I need sports info, I'll look it up. But if I need good info, God info, I also know where to go and I know where to look it up. It's at your fingertips and mine. Amen. None of this is in my notes. Just bear with me. Walking circumspectly. Let me read it again. See if we can get back on track here. See then that you walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. That is my next point. Oh, that guy's calling me fool. I'm not going back here. But you were a fool in the hood, though. I know, because you greeted people with, what's up, fool? <laughs> Come on, now. Don't, this is praise to people, right? Come on, don't, don't, just, don't get twisted with the suit. I, I'm not, I used to wear suits for court. <laughs> but I get to wear a suit. I choose to wear a suit in the house of the Lord. But don't get it twisted. I know. We could do a sock check. Longer the sock, the downer the fool. Look at Juan. He said, I, I got my socks up to here. I already know. He stays with long socks. But see, that was a different era for us. That was a different season for us. And if we can use what God intended for evil and turn it around for the good, for his glory, we will bear fruit and much fruit and lasting fruit. I don't know. I have to do a sock check on his son. Maybe he has those lines. Maybe he passed that on. But I know what else he's passing on. The word of God. Respect. Obedience. How to treat a, a woman early on. 
early on. So he could do that and still wear long socks. But he's teaching them the valuable principles of what it is to grow up as a man of God. That's what you all are doing here today. That's what we get to do here today. Because we don't want to walk as fools anymore. We want to be the wise. The wise. And the wisdom only comes from the Lord, church. It don't come from any book you read, any sermon you hear. You could travel to the East Coast and catch this great sermon and service and movement. It's not going to give you wisdom. Wisdom comes from above. And you have to tap into it. There's no special pill. There's no IV you could tap into your body and to get wise. You and I have to get wisdom from the Lord, from His Word. Quit being foolish. I know. God bless you if you already tuned out. Um, we just have to share the truth, friends. Our times are short. Times are short. You and I know this. Mar Matthew 10, 16 says this. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So we still use wisdom. We still, we keep our eyes open. Popular thing that people, non-believers will try to why you, you're just brainwashed. No, I'm not. I'm whole, filled with the Holy Ghost, and He gives me wisdom. He gives me eyes to see, and He gives me ears to hear. So I need to walk wise as a serpent. I never thought of this. This is the East LA version. Why a serpent meaning what? You get out of line, I, my arm might still might, wah, bah, go out. I, I don't know. I, it hasn't happened. I know some of my friends do. And, and thank God, I need, we need friends like that. Amen? But why is it surface? That means we're not going to be just pushed over and rolled over because we're believers. We're going to stand firm and believe God is our protector. God forbid we have to go to second measures. But God is our protector. We walk in that wisdom, which helps us to be harmless as doves. You see that? It, it helps us to be harmless as doves. We know we can have the wisdom of the serpent. The serpent is a striker. But because we know this, we can be as harmless as a dove. That's how we draw people to Christ. Knowing that they can come and they're not going to be harmed. We're not trying to harm them. We're trying to teach them to walk circumspectly. Amen? Brethren, 1 Corinthians 14.20. Do not be children in understanding. Come on. Grown man with the beard. I'm not picking on beards. I'm just thinking. You, you're grown, but a child in understanding and be grown with the big old beard. Sorry, I keep looking out. There's beards out here. <laughs> um, you know what I mean, though. We're mature, but mature in the, in the things of God as well. Do not be children in understanding, however, in malice be babes. In malice be babes. So we're not out there doing things that we used to do because we don't want to show malice towards anyone. So in malice, we're like babes. A baby's not going to harm anybody. It might give you a little kick if you're in close range, but it's not going to harm you, right? But in understanding. The Bible says, be mature. In understanding, be mature. We have to get to that place, church, of maturity. You have to get to that place in maturity. Don't put it on your pastor. Don't put it on the radio speaker that you listen to every week or every day. God bless you if you have that uh, um, diligence to be able to listen to the Word of God on a regular basis. But don't put it on that speaker if he didn't teach you how to be gentle as a dove. Because they just give you a little icing on the cake. You need to dig into the Word and gain knowledge of Christ yourself. Amen? Come on now. Not as fools, but as wise. 
it's important because verse 16 says in, in Ephesians 5, redeeming the time, redeeming the time, taking advantage of the time that God has given you here on this earth. You're redeeming it. You're getting something from it. Think about it. Because the days are evil, the Bible says, redeeming the time. God has given you and I a certain time on earth. And I don't know. I, I thank God. I, I think that I'm harmless as a dove. No lack. Good. Good. I think that I'm a babe when it comes to malice. I also know that if God has given me a certain amount of, amount of time here on, on God's green earth, just as he's given you a certain amount of time. One of our um, excuses, well, Pastor, I, I don't have enough time to uh, read the word. I don't have enough time to pray. I don't have enough time to um, fellowship with believers. Well, let's break that down. Last I checked, God has given you just as much as giving me 1,440 minutes per day. You have that same amount of time as I do. You have that same amount of time as I do. But you don't have time to pray? Do the math. It's not that you don't have time. It's that you don't want to. And that's a better answer. That's a better answer. I can respect that. Oh, I got it. God bless you, bro. You don't want to? Amen. We're still going to pray for you. But don't say you don't have time because you're still here. You're alive. He woke you up today. What are you talking about? The, the difference is, are you redeeming the time? Are you redeeming the time? See, when I was early on as a younger lad, I used to waste a lot of time. I used to waste time. I'm just sitting here wasting time. Literally. Just, just kind of wasting time. And I wasted many, many years. Thank God, you know, he still decided to wake me up today. But I wasted so many years where I could have been different. Different by what? By drawing near to God. Instead of away from him. But now, I know he's giving me a certain amount of time each day. And if I don't go home to be with the Lord to the day by midnight, I still have just as much time today as you do. It's up to me to redeem the time that he's given to me. Do I fail? I fail a lot. I fall a lot. I, 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 I don't capitalize on time. Many times. But I want to get up. And I want to get refocused. Recalibrated, if you will. Say, okay, God, this, what would you have me do? Because what I failed already is gone. The missed opportunity is already gone. But if I'm aware of it, maybe I won't miss the next one. If I walk circumspectly, I won't keep missing the same things, the same opportunities over and over again. Unless I'm a fool. Come on. Same applies for you. You keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. God, God, why, why are you not here? Why, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Ask yourself, am I being a fool? Am I being a fool? Or am I seeking the wisdom of God? Amen? See, God provides a gift for you and I. Certain time in this day, to, he, he will give you rest. And some of you are like, yeah, man, let's go get some rest. Let's go take a nap. It's okay if you, can, if, you, if you can take a nap. If you can still do the things that God has called you to do, he will give you the rest that you need. I used to joke around, but it's kind of real. I take about two or three naps a year. And, and only because I don't... I don't 
either I don't get to sometimes, and sometimes I, I get the time, and it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't have nothing to do. What am I going to do? But then I need to make myself rest. Rest in Him. We don't always have to be these busy bodies doing a bunch of stuff. Rest in Him and in His Word and in His presence. He gives you and I each, each a time for redemption so that we can be redeemed if we failed or fall, fallen short. He will redeem us. He gives you and I a time of restoration if we're running on empty spiritually. Somebody, anybody know what that feels like? I do. Oh, my gosh. And I feel it. And I know, okay, God, I need to be restored. I need to be rejuvenated in your word. I, I need to set myself aside and just, just be with you. Sometimes we don't get those opportunities, but when you get them, capitalize on them. Amen? He gives you and I the same amount of time to reap his rewards. There's rewards serving the Lord. The Bible says it. He is a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek after him. Come on. Not a rewarder of those who just kind of show up in a church and, and sit in a seat. If you're diligently seeking after him, he's going to reward you. He's going to give you the time you need. He's going to get a renewal of your mind, a healing in your heart. And then a bunch of other things that he gives us externally. Amen? He provides you and I the same amount of time. Reach others. To share the good news with others. He gives you and I the same amount of time to grow in spiritual maturity each each of us it's a common thing sometimes we want to do comparisons it's a common thing but stay away from comparison but sometimes we'll say man that brother's just growing that he's he's on fire is what they say right he's on fire i say like that he's on fire And you over here, you can't even light a candle. And if that's the case, find out what that other person's doing. Where does that fire come from? In the reading, in the praying, in the fellowshipping, in the studying, in the fasting, and all these things. That's, what, that's what's fueling that. You know, maybe we may not understand that early on as a new convert. But I'm looking at people three, five, ten years in. You should have some, some type of fire. You should be able to light something, friends. Come on now. You should be able to light something. So I say to you lovingly, get off the milk. Get off the milk, man, already. Big old baby with the beard. So I, the beer keeps coming out, guys. Uh, you know, it's a good analogy. I have a little grandbaby. She loves her some milk. But she, there, there's going to come a time she needs to start to be tapered off and get off the milk and go get into solid food. It's a natural development. That's how God made us. You and I as believers, we start off on the spiritual milk. The simple teachings. And if you get under a brother or sister who, who's going to guide you and um, disciple you in the ways of the Lord, they'll tell you, yeah, you know, you probably don't want to do that. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't do this anymore. But after 10 years, they shouldn't be telling you the same things of what not to do. You should have discovered that in the Word of God. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. Excuse me. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. You ought to be teachers. Yet you need someone to teach you the first principles and the oracles of God. The basic teachings of God. When you've been in church long enough that you should be teaching others. And then he goes on to say, and you have come to need milk 
and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. We call them spiritual babies, right? But they got to grow after a while. They have to grow up. God forbid that I walk around here with the chupon to give you every time you come because you need, you need to be pacified. None of this is in my notes. Solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See, after a few years of knowing the Lord and truly walking with the Lord, walking circumspectly with the Lord, you shouldn't have to come to the pastor and say, Pastor, this uh, a woman is really kind of reaching out to me. Do you think I should go and, and be with her? Bro, last, I, last time I checked, you're married. Why are you even asking me that? Get out of here with that. You know what I mean? I, I'm using that as a clear example. I mean, that's a simple no-brainer. That's a simple no-brainer. But maybe somebody early on who just got saved might have that honest question. And we, we, we gently, wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, kind of um, guide them and speak life into them. After a couple of years, the, the gentleness is gone. You need a snap out of it. Come on. God bless you all if you've checked out again. <laughs> God bless you. It's up to you and I, church, to redeem the times because the days are evil. Put on Christ. Romans 13, 11. Do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep Amen. for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. That's a fact. Today, my salvation is near. I am nearer to being with the Lord today, home in heaven, than I was yesterday. That's simple math. We're getting closer to making an account with the Lord. Wake up. It's time to wake up. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with your might. Do it to the best of your ability. Whatever it is. Do it to the best of your ability. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Ouch. Do now while you have time. Do now where you have 1,440 minutes left today to do good. Because where you're going after, it, it, it's going to be no mas. No mas. No mas. But if you're going to with God, we get to praise Him and honor him and say, worthy is the Lord. That's all we get, we get to do the rest of existence and eternity. But to get there, we have to walk, continue to walk circumspectly. Colossians 4, 5 says, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Again, I gave that example. There's people watching you. And if you say you're a Christian, they're looking for something different from you. Show them something different. Don't make them doubt. Don't make them say, man, well, you know, I guess I could be a Christian doing what I'm doing because brother so-and-so does the same things I do. Maybe I don't need to go to church. I'm already living like brother so-and-so. Come on. The days are evil. My last scripture. John 12, 35 to 36. Then Jesus said today to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness will overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Simple math. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become the sons of light. Then Jesus, these things Jesus spoke and departed, and then he was hidden from them. A little longer, the light is with you and I, friends. Walk in the light. If we have to choose, 
either light or darkness. Okay? There's no middle ground. Right now we have the light on. We're in the light. It's simple math. If we were to shut the lights off right now, we would be in darkness. There's no, there's no in between. Light, darkness. There's no middle ground. Thank you, brother. There's no middle ground. So choose to walk in the light or the light is still with you while you still have access to the light. We still have access to the Lord while we still have breath in us. Don't let the darkness overtake you. The darkness is ready, out there ready to take you into the dark. Right? Some of you like the dark as far as the scary movies and stuff. It's, it's okay. It's a movie. But you don't want to walk in the dark. You walk in the dark, you don't know where you're going. Plain and simple. How many people have stuffed toes and dropped stuff in the dark? I don't know about you. I, I just moved and I have to figure stuff out. So I come out and it's dark and, and I'm doing this. I, I have to find the light. I have to find the light. But after 20 plus years of being a believer, I shouldn't, try to, I shouldn't be trying the spiritual light. I should know where it's at and I should go to the light. Go to the light while it is still available to you and I. As we get ready to close. Walk in wisdom, friends, loved ones, beloved brothers, sisters. Walk in wisdom. Not as a fool, but as somebody who is wise. Somebody hasn't called you a fool in a long time. I called you a fool four times today. <laughs> <laughs> but you're online, so you don't know where I'm at. <laughs> but if you're here and you're not walking in wisdom, then you are a fool. Plain and simple. But we don't have to stay a fool. Right. We can walk in wisdom today. Amen. We can come to the Lord today. Yes. We can ask Him into our hearts today. Right. And He comes and He comes immediately. He doesn't waste time. There's no, uh, uh, like when you apply for a credit card, okay, we'll let you know in 48 hours. We already know if you didn't uh, approve me immediately, you know I'm not, I'm getting that letter. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord doesn't do that. Right. Once you right. welcome Him into your heart, He comes right. into your heart. Amen. And He removes your sin. Amen. He forgives you of your sin. Then it's up to you and I to walk in wisdom and not go back to walking in foolishness. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Give us a praise. God bless you. Thank you for those of you who joined us um, on the social media thing. God bless you. Pray that you would walk in wisdom today, that you would. I, I, I said a few jokes, but I speak in love, in all earnestness, earnestness and urgency. Walk in wisdom, friends. You will be blessed. God bless you. You're dismissed. Amen. The rest.